and we're pleased to have with us uh, Rosa Bustamante, who's the manager of Mobility Hubs for the City of Burlington. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And you, I asked you this question out there uh, right at the beginning. What the heck is a mobility hub? That's a great question, and I've got two answers. The technical answer from the province is the area within an 800 meter radius around a major transit station area. So that would be areas like subway stations or GO train stations. And if you kind of imagine an 800 meter radius circle around it, that would be a mobility hub by the province's definition. Uh, when we talk to the public, we talk about neighborhoods that are about a five to 10 minute walk around the GO train stations in Burlington. And that kind of gives people a sense of the area that we're talking about. Okay, so is a mobility hub transportation or is it planning? It's both, it really is. Okay. It's, it's the integration of um, fast, efficient, high frequent transit service with uh, new and planned built form and densities and heights and mix of land uses and all of those things coming together. So if I can put that all in a nutshell, it's, it's creating the densities by building up in those, around those mobility hubs to create more densities, to create uh, more efficiencies from a planning perspective, the services underground and the services above ground. Yeah, absolutely. Is that, okay, so you're starting the process, you're starting talking to the public out there. What do you want them to know about what's coming up regarding mobility hubs? Well, I think the interesting thing about mobility hubs for Burlington is that Burlington is really uh, one of the first municipalities in the greater Toronto and Hamilton area to reach what we call build out. So we've essentially built to the limits of our urban boundary and we don't have lots of fields and greenfield areas to keep putting in new subdivisions. And yet we know that by 2041, the region is expected to take in about a million people. Um, so as those people continue to come to this area and as immigration trends continue, Burlington has to look at where we're going to put the new people. And I like to think of it as Burlington 2.0 in terms of the next iteration of Burlington and where we put those people. And, and as you said, it makes a lot of sense to put them around the GO train stations and around the downtown bus terminal where we've got that frequent transit service. You know, just one thing while you're talking about 2.0, you know that some people still use Windows 7. <laughs> I know. And they will not change to Windows 10. And it's the same with mobility hubs. They want their communities to remain the same. Yes, I, we've heard that. How do you deal with that? Well, you know, part of this process involves going out to the public and really getting a sense of what their vision is for these four areas. You know, we think of it as uh, master planning. Uh, if you think of kind of like a university campus plan in terms of what do we want on each block and each parcel? And we're starting those conversations with the community now so that as we get the technical information, as we learn about the infrastructure, the capacity of our roads, of our transit system, of our uh, wastewater and water, we can also input the community's vision in terms of what what they want the future of these areas to look this like. Will, this will create more, uh, well first of all l let me get back and, and can we show those four mobility hubs Joey um, on the screen? So those are the four areas that we're talking about. Yeah. That means increased populations in those areas. Have you shared this with the school board? I was just gonna ask that. Where, where are the kids in the Appleby Mobility Hub going to go to school? I'm just, I'm just Yeah, no, I'm drawing the two, the yeah, two for programs sure. well, together. Yeah, schools are part yeah. of communities, yeah. right? Yeah. How many, I'm curious how many, uh, like, what would it look like, just pick Appleby for instance, how many people would you envision sort of at its peak living in that, that Appleby Mobility Hub, and uh, I'm, I'm assuming it would have all services like shops and all everything. But how many people would live um, in that particular area by 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 the maximum? What like at the end of this? You know, that's a difficult question to answer, and the reason is because of the existing land uses in each hub. So. 
for in Appleby, for example, um, there's a lot of what we would call employment lands, industrial lands. Um, there's big employers there, obviously. And so as we look to redevelop it in the future, and we do want to have commercial and residential uses uh, added to that area, it's difficult because there are some setbacks, some distant setbacks in terms of noise, odor, um, vibrations, other things <laughs> that come with the industry. And so to, so I guess I'm, that's a bit of a, I'm going, around, I'm going around in a circle a little bit, but I think at a high level, we could say that in each hub, we're looking to get probably between eight to 10,000 people and jobs combined. Mm -hmm. Now I think in each hub, that ratio will be different depending on the characteristics mm -hmm. of the hub and the land uses. Mm -hmm. but, you know, whether in some areas it's 5,000 and 5,000 to split, or whether it's 8,000 and 2,000, you know, we're, that's still to be determined through our project. So, is, and, and I, I hate to get back to the, to the previous issue that we were talking about, but is that information, and you said you're, you're starting the process, gonna discuss it for about three years, uh, which is a long time, is a long time yeah. uh, but to get that public input. Are you involving the school board to any degree? Because if the populations are going to increase dramatically in particular areas, that may affect what the school boards are doing now, potentially closing schools. Or have they asked you anything? Uh, that's a great question. So as part of this process, we are involving stakeholders like the school board. Um, they have asked about the project and we've given them the scope and the timeline and the time frames. I don't want to go too far into that issue. I think part of the problem is that our project is in its infancy and I think the school board is looking for some hard numbers and statistics and we just don't have them yet. Yeah, and, I, and as I said during that segment of the show, I think their school board's horizon is, is much shorter than the city's, well, who has a horizon of what, what time frame are you looking at uh, in terms of build out of these mobility hubs, like 30 years? Yeah, roughly 25 years. Yeah, yeah 25 years. Right. And that's, that's more of a long term uh, look at. Well, that was, and that was, uh, that was a highly political question your, your host asked, but, and, uh, not to, we weren't trying to put you on the spot. No, there. no. Just, it's, it's, there's very much a tie between what we were talking about before and this. Not, not just, just to, because it's, it's top of mind for everybody right now. But I'm fascinated by, um, like, what else would these look like? Would, would roads surrounding these things change a lot? Like, I'm fascinated by what this might look like as someone who lives along that corridor. Mm -hmm. There's actually a lot that we're looking at with these hubs. So we're looking at environmental issues. We're looking at uh, where the existing wetlands are, woodlots, endangered species, all of those types of things. We're looking at heritage and archeology span around these areas. Um, like I said, we're looking at the infrastructure. So what capacity does the city have to handle the increased density and the increased population and jobs that are coming? Um, and in some cases, it might mean new road networks. It might mean extending a road. It might mean creating a rapid transit lane. Um, right. Those are the kinds of things that we'll be looking at. Yeah. When when you say mobility hubs, I'm struck by the fact that the GO bus station at Highway 5 in between Guelph Line and Walker's Line isn't considered a mobility hub because there's green space there. And why isn't that included as a mobility hub? Does the province decide that, or can you have input into those mobility hubs? So in the city of Burlington, the province designated two of our hubs, the Burlington GO Station Hub and the Downtown Hub. And that's in the big move. That's in the uh, province's regional transportation plan. And a former mayor uh, helped write <laughs> that, uh, Rob McIsaac. <laughs> I believe so. Yes. Um, and the city identified the other two hubs, the other two GO stations, as all playing an integral role in terms of where Burlington grows. So for the purpose... So is that a temporary one at, at uh, Highway 5 or Dundas Street and in, at just at the 407 uh, um, where you get on The carpool off. lot? Yeah. yeah. It is part of the greater transportation system, but it's not considered a mobility hub because it doesn't have the level of transit service that the GO stations the and the downtown and bus terminal have. 
So the bus service doesn't run as frequently. Um, there's not as many connections. It's not as well connected into the system as the other hubs. Okay, it, it, it's so it's an interesting question. It isn't though. Is just there any in the north. No. Is there any? No. But no. Will, okay. So okay. And that's that's why I say I'm surprised that yeah. one wasn't designated up there. So it really isn't a transportation issue. The mobility hubs. Because if it were, you'd be looking at walking, at cycling, at automobiles, and so on. And the 407 runs right by that uh, location, so that would qualify it. Um, I'm just interested in why that wasn't chosen. Well, you'd have to ask the province uh, why they didn't include that. Or and why the city didn't include it as one of the potentials to grow. And as I say, it, it's greenfield up there, very low densities. Now it's also right on the, uh, on the cusp of the rural and urban areas. Yeah, and that's part of the issue too up there. We have the Greenbelt Plan and we have other uh, provincial policies that really support keeping that urban and rural boundary but strong. But south of the 407, that's wide open territory. You know what, it's possible in the future it could be a mobility hub. At this point, uh, the province and city haven't identified it as having the level of transit service to, to call it one, but that's not to say in 10 or 20 years as things continue to evolve, it might have the level of service that because would. Because I can see some rapid transit uh, along uh, Dundas Street between Mississauga and Hamilton. And that only makes sense to me. Sorry, go ahead, Casey. Are these the mobility hubs, are, are they built slowly? Are they bills or a timeline for each one, or are they, is there like how would how would that look to a resident of the city? So what you'll see happen over the next couple of years, uh, next couple of years, as we work with the community, is we really want to create these, as I said, sort of master plans uh, for each neighborhood, and they're going to set out the uses and the densities and the built form that we could expect. Um, and and as we go through it with the public and we land on that vision and we hopefully get council's endorsement, uh, we will then get down to the zoning stage where we really get into the zoning on every single property in the hubs. And from there, it's really up to market forces as to how quickly things start to redevelop and how, how quickly property owners turn over the land. Is, is what we see going on at Burlington GO Station, all the building, is that connected in any way to these mobility hubs? The condos on yeah, the south side? Yeah, all the condos going up. You know, that and the very low-rise Walmart. <laughs> yes, yes. Both of those developments predate our work. Okay. Um, certainly okay. we'll be looking at how to incorporate them and how to uh, project forward what, what will happen around them in the future. Uh, but those sort of, yeah, they were pre-existing before the Mobility Hubs they project were, okay. started. Okay. Uh, and I'm sure that you know this. Uh, when you get into the real discussions with the community, um, I'm thinking of one or two of the mobility hubs in particular. Is not going to one of them's not going to want uh, a smelly factory uh, being part of that that hub, uh, and the other one isn't going to want anything over four stories built. How do, you, how do you reconcile those issues with the community and reality? To be a true mobility hub and that, uh, uh, that intensification that needs to take place. Well, I think there's two answers to that question. The first part is having this dialogue with the public and talking about the fact that Burlington and Halton are going to grow. Um, there's no question, it's a very desirable place to live. It's voted one of the best places in Canada to live. We know people are locating here. And it's up to us to decide where we want that growth to happen and what we want it to look like. Um, not having any growth is not an option. Um, in terms of um, what, what form it takes, I think that's where the public can really shape what, what we're talking about in terms of low-rise, mid-rise, high-rise blocks. Um, will there be high-rise on some blocks? I think so. Even though the public wants low-rise, and I'm thinking of the downtown mobility hub. Now, well, you know that you're going to get pushback from that community and their representative uh, to go to, not to go too high. 
I think the conversation we have to have with the public about height is um, deciding for ourselves where we want the height to go. So we have a choice as a city about deciding where we want to put growth and what it's going to look like or waiting for the development industry to select sites and propose heights and densities. And we'll be in a much better position if we proactively make those decisions and we have those frank conversations rather than uh, letting market forces dictate that. And how does this relate how does your job of building these build out in the in these four areas how does that translate to the official plan because none of that's in the official plan is it that's a great question. So in the draft new official plan that was just released, there are some transitional policies that talk about the mobility hub areas and what we expect will start to happen over the next few years. With the downtown in particular, we're actually prioritizing our public engagement and our technical work. And we are hoping to wrap it up in the fall and actually uh, tie it into the final new official plan that will go to council in November. Um, so we do want the downtown to be part and parcel of that document. The other hubs are going to lag behind slightly, and those hubs, when the policies and master plans are finished, will essentially be amendment number one to the official plan. So the official plan... So you're plan, already thinking of amendments to it. <laughs> well, unfortunately, no, it, the timing... It happens. It happens. You can't have everything uh, concurrent and, and moving smoothly, or it wouldn't be uh, municipal government. Would it wouldn't it? be fun. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. Uh, we're going to take a, a break right now, and when we come back, uh, we'll have about uh, about five or six minutes, and I want to put up the, the those mobility hubs again so people can see where they're located, and uh, um, and maybe you can tell them how to get involved and where to get involved. So uh, that's when we come back right here Absolutely. on Kojiko TV. I'm Mark Carr. Welcome back to The Issue. I'm Mark Carr with co-host uh, Casey Cosgrove and our uh, manager of Mobility Hubs, uh, Rosa Bus Bustamante. Um, Rosa, how can people get involved? Well, first of all, let's, let's put up the, the four Mobility Hubs again. Uh, control room can put those up. Um, how can people get involved in a discussion around those? those hubs. So with this project we actually have lots of ways for people to get involved. Our project team is located in a, a retail slash office space on Locust Street uh, right across from the Esso gas station yeah. and we have staff there from about nine to five every day um, so the public's always welcome to drop by um, have a conversation with us give us their thoughts and ideas. We're also holding four formal public meetings for each hub over the next two years and so we've started advertising those on our website. Um, we've started advertising it in social media on Facebook and Twitter. Um, the, the ward councillors are putting those dates out and about and we're also sending registered mail to people in the hubs. So there's lots of chances to get involved. Um, on top of that we are also doing what we call coffee shop consultations. So in each hub um, over four or five different days and times uh, members of our team will be sitting there in the coffee shop uh, waiting for people to drop by, uh, get a tea or a coffee and have an informal discussion with us about their ideas. Oh, that's that's a unique idea. Have you ever tried that before? I'm not aware of the city having okay. done it before. It's but something that, new that for sounds, us. But that sounds interesting. I think you'd get more Starbucks, honest reaction. Uh, Tim Hortons. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know what? We're spreading it around. Yeah. We're going yeah. to all different coffee shops. You're good. You, you'll do well at, at yeah. the city. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm surprised, though, that they're called mobility hubs. Um, it should be a public transit hub because that's what it's about is public transit as opposed to mobility which conjures up in in my mind bike lanes and and walking well, and and how you get around then cuz i'm think you're talking about housing and and what not in those that's areas a aren't you issue. well though, so it's not just about transit it's about housing people I coming and living here just do me a favor, leave a little tiny room for schools, because it sounds like we might need to build a couple more here soon. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm kidding. Yeah. You know, it, it really is planning and transportation together. Um, we can't have successful neighborhoods where you can walk to the grocery store and walk to your place of employment unless we have 
trails, um, good pedestrian connections, streets that are easy to navigate. So the two go hand in hand as we develop these areas. Okay, and you were talking about the mobility hubs identified in, in the big move that Rob McIsaac uh, um, was responsible for. And I'm wondering if that goes to the extent of saying within 200 meters you've got to have a bus stop because Burlington Transit is the worst transit system that I know of. You know, I can tell you that the city this year is embarking on a new transit master plan. Will it get passed? You'd have to ask council. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they are actually looking at their, the routes that they want to improve service on, uh, which ones are most utilized, which ones have the opportunities to shape future development. We know that if we put transit in certain places, the development will follow if but, the service but is But you there. know that the money hasn't followed that nice talk about public transit. Uh, Walter Mokowicz, who has been a, uh, uh, an advocate of public transportation, uh, has is member of this uh, the panel last year, and he would say that if the money doesn't follow, it's just a lot of hot air. So I'm fascinated by this whole idea. Is there somewhere that we can look to as an example of where these mobility hubs have been done with some success? Like is there an example of a city where, where this has been done? You know, it, it really is breaking ground. Um, the province gave this direction roughly five to ten years ago to municipalities across the GTA. And Burlington is one of the first municipalities to do a study this comprehensively to really look at these four areas and master plan them, you know, in very granular detail, all the way down to the streets and the parcels. So this hasn't been done before anywhere? Not at this level. Okay. Well, I'd, okay. I'd say whether it's been done officially or unofficially, if you take a look at Toronto and Union Station, uh, where the trains come in and go out, buses come in and go out, uh, across the street is, is a business, down the street is a business, and look at the condos going up. So that's uh, the infrastructure. Anyway, Rosa, we, we appreciate you, you coming on. We're, we're out of time, uh, but I really think that this is going to be difficult for you at some, uh, at some stage convincing all of the public and I think you're taking a, a good route to, to hopefully uh, well, get that in. I think it's exciting. I, I think mean, you're it's the exciting. only guy I know that doesn't like public. I, I, so, th I think it's um, exciting. I think I we should, it's really, it's really should, should build up those mobility hubs, uh, regardless of what people say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. Uh, I, I do want to thank also, along with Rosa, Daniel Faria and uh, uh, Vicky uh, for our volunteers behind the camera and in the control room, and Kim Sloan White for handling our uh, social media, and of course to Casey for uh, being here tonight and bringing forward the school issue. Nice to be here. Okay. Thanks. We'll see you Thanks, next Robert. week here on The Issue on Kojiko TV. Truly, truly local television. Good night.